home with him. I sent him in the diary last night. Is that it? You're just not kidding. because of a board of abatement meeting afterwards, so we should get started. So, uh, can I approve the minutes? Is everybody approved the minutes? Yes. That's your new job. Okay. Let's approve it. So. Just want to to change about the agenda. Uh, I was here at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Help set up. Public comments. Anything to say? No, I'm here just to get a civic lesson. Ah, I'm not sure this is the right place. <laughs> <laughs> they are civil. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay, so the first thing then would be to um, sign this uh, right of way. Um, Yes, so. so has has a lawyer gone through this? Were you going to answer it? Yes. Okay. He did before. Twice. Okay. Uh, let me just pick out something here. But I know this is a legal document, but. Um, I mean, there's opening sentences that say um, that this can be forever, and then yeah, it's temporary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and then it goes on to sort of say temporary. But uh, didn't you ask that the last time? No, I asked what behoof meant the last time, and uh, I failed to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Behoof. So, Phil, I've spoken to Mr. Um, maybe twice on this. Yes. He says that by far the language of temporary far exceeds the sentence or two that says permanent. Okay. He says there's no way that the state can hang your hat that for some reason this easement all of a sudden is going to become the major to right away. Yeah. He okay. said it okay. basically says a non point. Okay. Great. Non issue. Behoof. Behoof or behoof? Behoof. Oh. Behoof forever. Oh yeah. Um, let me do. Let me. Uh, I'm not sure if it was in the one that went out to you or not. So there was two paragraphs that were added. One at the request of Mr. Mammy, and one at the request of Great River Hydro that actually owns an easement themselves on the property. Uh, our paragraph was that after completion of the transportation project, it will be the obligation of the state of Vermont uh, and or its contract to repair any damage done to the premises of the grantor and restore the grantor's property to substantially the same condition as grantor's premises were prior to any entry or use by the state of Vermont and or its contractors, including grading and receiving as necessary. That was added to page two. Mm -hmm. We have that. Okay, and then Great River Hydro, and this kind of is uh, along the lines of their easement as well. Uh, Great River Hydro inserted the language, um, and by the way, took both our signature and Great River Hydro's signature on this. Um, Great River Hydro LLC retains an interest in the property pursuant to the restrictions contained in the above reference quick claim deed with con conservation restriction and so joins in the signing of this grant of temporary rights subject to the following conditions. The state of Vermont shall, to the extent practical, practicable, 
minimize any interruption, interference, or limitation to public recreational use of the property during the transportation project. So their interest was to retain essentially the, the recreational use that exists today as Sumner's Falls. Um, Great River Hydro's assent to this temporary grant of rights shall in no way be deemed a weaver release or discharge of any of its rights. And Mr. Manby um, read both of those as well um, and uh, had no issue. Actually, he requested the one that we entered. He has read Great River Hydro's paragraph. He um, looked back at the, um, the purchase um, or not sure if we purchased or they gave us the land, but um, essentially their restriction or their easement on it and um, feels as though that's right in line with their, their easement. Do you have a copy for us to sign? I do. Uh, we don't leave two pages blank simply because Martin and I haven't quite figured out what they're asking, but uh, it also takes a notary. Um, Martin can do that. And you can saw it up here, right here. So do you need a, <clears throat> a motion? We voted on it last week, last meeting, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they leave these big blacks, and it's hard to tell what they expect to put in here. Well, Beginning and end dates of this document is just the, the easement. The Rob also said that's fairly yeah. far for course. Okay. Um, you know, it gives them leeway, and you know, yeah, talks about the projects being stretch. done by you know May 15th, what they need that they need to go to the 30th or something like that, and you know, rebid the entire thing. So essentially, when the project's done, the easement goes away. Yeah. So two pieces were signed, just one. Exciting. Just one. This, yeah, the second page is Great Hydro. Great Never Hydro, or whatever it is. some discussion about the, especially in the last year or so, since uh, properties have been popping up that nobody knew were there, not having a building ordinance permit, or building permit ordinance, I said that way. So there were some thoughts about that, Dave, I assume. Um. Just to add, well, so the last time we spoke about this, the director from the board um, seemed to indicate that to ask two rivers out of Queechee River, uh, two rivers out of Queechee Regional Commission to draft up an ordinance and to see what that would look like. Um, there is a bit of a work effort to that. Um, some things they seem to be able to do and some things um, they, if there's grant money that can be attached to it, then they, more readily do it that way. So they, uh, I spoke to them, they said that there is, um, they think that 
Um, they can get some planning grant money to uh, do it. Uh, so I said that, um, you know, if that's possible, certainly go ahead and, and draft up the, the application to do it. Um, move forward with that. Uh, I got an email today from Kevin Geiger, um, who said he's been uh, out with family situation, so I haven't seen uh, what that application looks like. But uh, next meeting uh, or thereabouts, um, they would we would need to sign that the select board supports Two Rivers moving forward with a grant um, to draft up what would be an ordinance to look at. Um, I think that that was really what you kind of wanted to see um, and to take a look at that. So um, that's what that's where we're going with the next step. What grant is it? Uh, municipal planning grant. Aren't they funded by us? We do. We have to pay a membership. We do. It's kind of a love-hate thing with the regional commissions. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell Tom that yeah. I see him. But uh, uh, it would be a whole lot higher uh, if they didn't fund themselves primarily through grants. Well, yes, absolutely. But there must be uh, some work that they can do for us that's not grant-funded since we have a membership. So Rita and um, Rita came and spent an hour you know, at uh, right. Rhodes Group, uh, did Gish is spending hours on the enhanced energy plan with the energy committee? Uh, there's some grant money behind that, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know there would probably need to be some legal review with the document as well. So, so if they don't get the grant, then we don't get this. I'm, I'm unclear as to what that would look like if they don't get the grant, but they seem to think that um, this would be possible. So um, kind of fits with their MO. Okay. They, the Regional Commission does most of, they're more readily available, you may know this, they're more readily available for items that they get grant funding for. You know, so if you pick up the phone and talk to them about a Brownsfield site, they'd be over here in like 38 seconds. If you pick up the phone and talk to them about something else to divulge and look into that's kind of like off the beaten path a little bit, then less of a response. But that's, in my experience with the regional planning commissions, that's kind of part of that's pretty normal. No. Yeah. Kind of they, kind of Dave, do you, do you know if the listers have any um, estimates of how many uh, properties that they reappraised or during the reappraisal cycle that they discovered um, something that would have been covered by the building permit or would have required a building permit? Um, I would say 20 to 25 of the structures that we found. Mm -hmm. uh, would hopefully be, you know, somewhere in there. That's not even to mention any renovations or new barns or, you know, sheds mm -hmm. or buildings or anything like that. Just major structures. Mm -hmm. That's not including the yeah. one we found around Memorial Day down Harvard Hill, about $450,000 value thereabouts. But, uh, you know, give or take. All this <laughs> helps. So. Um, it is it is simply, you know, I, I've spoken a lot in the last, I don't know, almost since I've been here, but more recently in the last year, um, it's very difficult for a town to operate effectively without some sort of structure. Uh, it needs to, you know, without that structure, it's, it's, it, it moves along. Um, you know, it, for us to have done this reappraisal this year after 15 years of not doing one was extremely difficult. Um, it was very time consuming, very difficult to put together. Um, and that's not excluding the 170, you know, grievances that we had. And half of those grievances, I think, was simply because people don't know the process. It was almost as if Heartland had never done a reappraisal before. You know, people were coming in with, 
crazy comments and things like that. I mean, it's almost, you know, literally is, it is difficult to operate that way. And, and to be honest with you, we haven't done a true reappraisal since about 2002. Um, we did one, it was kind of a tweak in 2006 or seven. Um, we didn't really go out and knock on doors and get into houses. So think about for a moment in the last 18 years, the change in town that has happened that really has been picked up very little or just kind of off the cuff. Um, so, you know, that you can say is, doesn't mean anything to anybody and we life goes on, but I think that, you know, a lot of taxpayers that hear and understand this ask the question of, you know, hey, you know, that's a lot of development and un, you know, assessed value that, you know, would help the grand list with, you know, um, you know, and just for the sake that we don't know that it's out there, we don't know what's going on and it affects the roads and, and driveways and everything else. Um, it's, it's, in my mind, kind of an important component. So the next one should be, what, what are the, you know, the um, periods of between things that are recommended? I would recommend about every five. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Is that typical? Depends on the town that you're in. Um, towns have gone every 15 years, every 20 years, or whatever the, the statistics tell it that it needs to have a reevaluation. But again, I'm going to come back to you know preaching, keeping the tax rate increases steady and consistent. You know, we had people that their assessments went up. We had people's assessments went down. Um, Interestingly enough, we had a couple of people grieve because their assessments went down. <laughs> I, but that's just, um, again, it's just kind of, you know, you don't understand the process. You don't do it often enough. People don't really get a grip of what's going on. Um, I, and again, so, you know, the assessment or your assessed value is kind of going every which way if you're not doing it enough. Again, consistency is, in this case, a good thing. Um, and, and keeping that valuation and, and consistent and, and understanding the trend is, is a positive thing. Not to mention you, you know, pick this stuff up, but generally what occurs, we don't have zoning in this town, but generally as part of the reevaluation, reappraisal process, is every year in between that five-year process, the listers will go through any permits that have come through the town. So let's just say a town has had 20 zoning permits for whatever reason, whether it be you know, work done to here, there, or anything else. Uh, the listers review, the, we review that yearly and, and make the, the change to the, to the lister card. Uh, that does not happen here. Um, and that would be part of that building permit process. You seem to be interchangeably using zoning permit and building permit. Which one are you actually referring to? I'm uh, referring to both, actually. So both towns have a zoning permit. We do not. I am proposing just a building permit in which there's no zoning, but if you're going to build, you at least need to notify the town. Sure. So you would have somebody keeping track of who's building in town. Um, you know, and, and out there, you know, keeping track of new development or, or something like that. So in our case, it would not be a zoning permit, it would truly be a building permit. That made more sense, but yeah. I'm a little surprised that you started dropping into saying zoning permit. Uh, that's just in the process, the everyday process, in towns that have zoning, that is picked up through the zoning permit, is all I'm trying to say. Well, zoning building permits are quite different than what they do and how they're applied. I'm not going to get that far into it, other than, That's with, right. other than I'm, I'm happy with your saying building permit. Okay. So we can be, okay. I'm not trying to be fussy. I just. Uh, Dave, when do you expect that we may hear if 
to Rivers is going to go forward with this? I expect to hear hopefully in the next two weeks. Great. I think they're going, I have communicated with them to yeah. go forward with the application. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my update here today um, to you, which is somewhat in line with Two Rivers moving forward and putting together okay. an ordinance language. Yeah. Um, it's just that they're not, you know, they just didn't pick up the phone and say, okay, we're on it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, three weeks later they said, oh yeah, we can do that. I think we have some grant money available to allow us to do that. Yeah, so I think I left the meeting when they made the presentation on the floodplain um, that Kevin was going to go and do some research of other towns that were similar to Heartland that he thought had a building permit. So, so there is, has been quite a lag. And, and yes, but I, to be honest, we've been busy with other things as well. Sure. So it's been, you know, we're just kind of catching up to it at this right. point. Okay. Can, uh, I don't know about how much we can influence their, their draft. We would hope it would be uh, designed to be simple, short and simple. I want to see something this thick. Uh, two pages would be really great. Yeah. That's what they told us. Yeah, we love that. Yeah, uh, we believe it when we see it. In this case, to go to connect the dots, we're talking an ordinance, so yeah. it's a big difference compared to, say, a bylaw. You know, ordinance is you know, it's fairly specific. But. Yeah. Well, I can see how it would be quite helpful. Let's just, let's be sure. So I'd like to look for it. <laughs> That's why people bother to do it. Well, that's why we would have him, he would be out and about, so he would need to also, he would have office time, but then there would be time out in, in, the, in the town looking for him. Well, anybody else have any comments about this? How are we coming on the tax rate? We do not have the tax. We do not have the state number, so we will need to set something up for Wednesday. It can be Wednesday morning or afternoon, but I'm only available till I can make myself available in the evening. If need be. I was hoping to disappear on three, but uh, if need be, I can do. I can do it. I can be fine. So you know. But every time I can get three people here to sign, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it is, once we do the math, it's going to be what it is, whatever it is to make the, the budget, um, to bring in the revenue for the budget that we have the voters have approved as well. So we actually have to have a, have a meeting? We don't just sign? Uh, we should have a meeting and make a motion. Um, and is there enough time to warn this? 24 hours for a special meeting. Okay. That's why I can have it for tomorrow. I yeah. actually would really like to have it tomorrow, but um, we gave it up till four o'clock today. There was some hope that we would have it this afternoon. Didn't happen. Uh, my only commitment Wednesday is uh, at 5.30 here. That's the only time you can do it? No, I'm saying my only, I'm open otherwise on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Because you had put the word out that it could be either either day. Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday morning, what time? Eight, nine. Nine? That's good for me. I can do that. Can you do that? <laughs> I could have to open up. <laughs> We can yeah. feed the heifers well, first, and will that, that help? I don't want to make any promises. But you only need three people. Yeah. 
and I can probably get here. Have some silage on my fingers. Is that what the, is that current dollars? I mean, What's that? You say the the, the grand list only went up that amount from last year. Correct. Or, and and the amount that goes up is based on the assessments that haven't been done for fifteen years. Correct. So in fifteen years, our our uh, total has not changed very much at all. So we did have an update. We do have updates. If if I got this correct, if the three million is indeed what I if I heard that correctly, so the thought is is that we last revisited this in about two thousand six or seven. When in two thousand seven, right before the, the real estate market crashed. So the thought process is is that the land values essentially went down and then have kind of come back up and therefore have not moved tremendously. Although again, we did see there are some properties that did go up considerably and a grouping of properties that actually went down. Um, so it kind of offset each other. So that is amazing. It is. <laughs> the yeah, well, was going to go up that amount, particularly because also during that period, there's the, the new houses, new development. Well, those, those, we're comparing this to last year. Those new houses got added on. Okay. Uh, we're not not comparing the total grand list. I don't believe from today, 15 years ago. We we're, we're, we're going back a year, and we did have a. Up, uh, I forgot what they called that. Was it? They, they did a change of assessments, um, mostly on paper, without actually going out and looking at everybody's property. And of course, anybody that builds a new house, that gets added on as it, as it, as it happens. So. Okay. So, uh, This merit campbell thing, we may be able to uh, do it without, um, because everybody knows, I think, what the property is. So we have to mention our names. We can do it. Yeah. Go ahead, David. I'm doing that. Uh, so, what are we doing first? Manager's notes. Okay. Uh, and I have lost. Got my manager's notes, but I had another one that had some scribbles because I had usually have a lot of good stuff that happens after I send it out to you. And uh, looking for that. Find it. So I'll kind of wing it. So. 
So VJ is uh, due back August 26th. My understanding is that um, that is without restrictions. So we should be seeing him uh, on the 26th, which is about three weeks away at this point in time. So when he was injured, um, we kind of had um, the LCT comes and they talk to the person that is uh, injured. And uh, they talk to us and they give us kind of a written report. And one of the things that they outlined, uh, particularly in this case, is that we don't have, when somebody gets injured, we don't have a provider that we can send them to, like a provider that uh, is associated or at work. Somebody comes to us and says, okay, you need to go see so-and-so, and, -so, and um, they're looked at by a doctor. In this case, the person um, was injured the prior week, showed up on a Monday morning, said that they had injured themselves and they went to the emergency room. Um, so emergency room doctors will ultimately refer you to somebody else in this case. That's what happened in emergency rooms are also twice as expensive as anywhere else that you should go. So um, Martin and I sat down with the LCT and kind of talked about this and I think what you'll see from us is um, Martin and I are going to look at three policies related to workers' compensation. One is to have a uh, provider that when a person comes to an immediate incident, when somebody comes to see us and say, I've hurt my shoulder or I've hurt my elbow or something to that effect, um, we can refer them to go see such and such doctor and to, uh, we get an update as to what, what's, what has happened to these people. Um, that was the first um, item that was proposed by BLCT that we looked at. The second one was to have a return to work policy. Uh, we've kind of winged it a little bit. Um, whereas if there is, if the doctor states that the person can return to light duty um, or can return, um, that there is some policy stating that yes, we can take a person on light duty and we'll put them to work. Um, or if there's, in BJ's case, he's coming back after you know, almost a two month absence, you know, we work him into the process and kind of get him in effectively um, and we kind of go from there. Third policy that was recommended, and we already have had started to do this, but um, to put it on paper and to look at a more consistent way of going forward is the actual first report um, of injury the first incident um, that um, we, by law, I think it's 48 hours, we 72. have to, 72, we have to report an injury, but it's kind of tough for us to report it if they don't report it to us. So we need to kind of, we've already talked about this at the department head meetings, um, but to put it out to every employee and to ensure that if something does occur, they notify their department head and we have them fill out a first report of injury. Um, even if it leads to nothing, um, it is on the record and it goes in and, um, you know, if something pops up two months later, like, oh, my back, you know, or something like that, We've got it. Hopefully, they've seen the provider. They looked at, and, you know, such and such was the response. And it's just a more formal um, way of kind of connecting, con connecting the dots, and kind of seeing this process through in kind of an efficient manner. Um, you'll probably be seeing more of that from us as soon as we get it from Wade. And um, we also told Wade that we would meet with two providers that VLCT works with um, for medical providers and um, we would have more insight. Who, who's Wade? Wade Major is the um, one of the representatives from VLCT Passive. Passive is the insurance component to VLCT. Um, he's kind of the guy that you know, when we broke her, when the water pipes froze, um, you know, he came to the rec center keep it hot and look at it got us going. So don't, don't we suspect that, that uh, BJ didn't know whether he was injured or not at first? Uh, he knew that he was sore and hurt. Mm -hmm. He just assumed that 
this was something that he would or could shake off. I'll just go away. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what I want. We would like people to report that more often than not. Yeah, go quicker. So we went to the emergency room on, on Monday morning? On a Monday. So this happened on Friday. See, this is why yeah. it's important to document it. We're a little unsure as to what day it actually occurred. Um, who kind of in passing let Doug know who was filling in for, for Bill. I think if Bill had been there, he would have sent it to Mark quicker. Um, so it happened in the course between like a Tuesday and a Friday. And, but Monday morning he pops up and he was unable to work. So. And, we, and then we have no place to send him except the uh, In this case, he was just like, you know, I think I'm going to need to be seen by somebody. Um, so is that going to be possible to have a particular doctor or whatever to? I think it is. I think it's statutorily okay. And if I'm not correct, I think our own employee manual states in there that if we choose to have a person looked at by our own doctor, we can. So I, I assume we would make some effort to make this convenient for the employees, you know, so that they don't have to drive to Bennington to see this single provider or something like that. I'd be available in Lebanon. Okay. Or West Lab, Lebanon or West Lab. Okay. And would this single provider become more or less a case manager for this? Is there, is there an ongoing role as? Don't, I wouldn't confuse, so the case manager would be, there's, so there's a case manager for workers' comp that is a case manager by the that insurance That would be on the company. insurance side, right. But so on the medical side. The medical doctor would, would, would um, is a medical doctor for the individual, um, although we would get the results of the, of the, the visit. So the person is capable of going back to work, is not capable of going back to work, or something a little bit more specific than what we get. Mm -hmm. okay. And this might be a, a provider or a practice that we would refer to. We, somebody coming to us with an injury, we would refer them to this practice. To the practice. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't be as cutting. I mean, you can't. That's really convenient. You've already chosen someone in the We have not, but no, there's nobody in Scutney that they were would act at, 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 in this capacity. Where did you go from there? I believe you went to a Scutney for the emergency room. Thank. Yes, you went to Scutney. Scutney does have occupational therapy. That's why they're not on the list. Oh. Um, update on, uh, so we did have a hearing with uh, the Ben Percy case. Um, so this wraps up one of the uh, legal challenges that we had. Um, so the legal challenge in this case was he was challenging our ability to put a house lot on a uh, parcel. So if it's, a, if it's just an open parcel, um, uh, Essentially, the town uh, taxes at the highest and best use. Uh, so on an empty lot, it, it is possible to build a house. Uh, they are taxed a house parcel. I'm not quite getting the terminology right, but um, something to that effect. Uh, perfectly within our guidelines, perfectly acceptable way of doing uh, business. Uh, ben Percy challenged that. We won the legal argument. Um, so we did, uh, which was our main concern on that. Um, there is a second component on the valuation. So even if he loses the legal argument, you can still rehash it's essentially de novo on the valuation. Um, he was assessed at 56. We had him at like 96, and the judge gave an evaluation of 70 um, with really no. It wasn't anything that we were really arguing over. Um, he, we had said it was a non-arm's-length transaction. Uh, the judge 
Ben really didn't make this argument. Uh, the judge determined that it was an arm's length transaction, which makes it a, you know, you would think that the fair market value would go to the sale price, which was at 56, but he gave it a valuation of 70 um, because he felt as though the town's assessed values were essentially on the up and up. So if anybody can make heads or tails out of that, I, I don't know, but um, our big, our main concern was essentially defending our ability to put a house lot uh, on the property when we tax, and that was upheld. So um, I think that at the end of the day, um, in that particular case, um, the judge basically agreed with us. Uh, in the valuation, I think he just came close to splitting in half. Um, delinquent taxes, tax sale uh, continues, is scheduled for 11 a.m. August 15th. I believe we're down to five parcels at this point in time. We've had a couple big ones come through. The mortgage companies have paid, um, and for they have paid, I can think of two or three of those. So um, we're down to, again, five. So hopefully we can whittle that down. I do expect to see maybe three go anyway, so um, that is progressing uh, as we speak. Uh, big one, the four corners, uh, three corners intersection. Uh, we have gotten um, designs, Dan Peck has the designs from Green Mountain Power. Um, it is essentially uh, a more detailed drawing of what they provide us the first time. Uh, complete burial. Uh, they do make provisions for, they needed the two. If you remember, there wasn't enough room on one coming up, so they've got a second one behind it coming up to make room for all the cables coming up from the underground. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, the pole out in front of BG stays. They basically wanted nothing to do with trying to go underground to that complex, just too complex. Um, although they do um, go underground into the Matt Dunn building there, um, so they were able to do that. Um, and uh, that was the original design. They did do a design for uh, keeping the north-south utilities um, aerial and bearing the rest. Uh, there is a cost savings to that. Um, and I don't know, they're still looking at, the, Dan Peck has to do his estimates and then it's gotta go back up to the utilities. But we have gotten that back from Green Mountain Power, so it is progressing. Um, and, um, you know, both Dan Peck and Green Mountain Power seem to be really positive about what they saw. Well, I'm see. happy to hear that we're, we're, we are, from an engineering perspective, keeping two options on the table, or three options, no one, two, none. Um, uh, Ted, you, in your update, you always refer to Green Mountain, Mountain Power. Um, is What about the other seven or eight utilities? Is it is it just clone? Green Mountain Powers figures and then you? Not the figures, so we need to send it back out to the, the other utilities for their updated estimates. Mm -hmm. It derives from Green Mountain Power because they do, where they go, the rest follow. So they do the initial design work mm -hmm. and lay out where the conduit's gonna go for Green Mountain Power, then the other five utilities follow that. So that's why Green Mountain Power is our liaison, essentially. Right. I don't want to get into too much detail, but our, is Green Mountain Power and Dan Peck assuming there would be one tunnel where all the conduits would then be on a rack going through? There'll be one trench line. One trench line. Let me line. clarify okay. that. I, don't, I think there'll be multiple conduits. I think there'll be one trench line. Right. Because if I understand, these guys didn't want to share conduits. But, uh, you know, not in my backyard. It was kind of like they were pretty clear about that. So. At least with Green Mountain Power. Yeah, but, uh, yeah they, I don't think they want to start getting in. We're we'll have to work around somebody else's cable. Uh, I've been kind of holding off on making this comment, but um, you know, as we progress here, it's, it's becoming more difficult. So I'll just kind of 
for a little while with a volley out there. Uh, highway department, again, we talked about um, BJ. Uh, we got Doug on vacation. Um, Skip's having some issues with his dad, so a lot of times we're running with like three people. Um, just a real difficult way of doing business. Um, kind of went through the winter. Uh, plowing routes uh, are difficult and um, are time consuming. We just talked about the Three Corners intersection. There is absolutely no way we're going to be able to absorb the Three Corners intersection and not hire an additional worker. It's just not physically possible to plow out that parking lot on either side. Matt Dunn's driveway and the um, in front of Damon Hall is going to essentially take a backhoe um, to do that, to get that snow out of there. Um, so it's not going to be just one buildings and grounds person, but it's going to be kind of an endeavor. So I am just going to say that um, it is important that Bill focus on some of the large uh, scale things. Um, we are relying on subcontractors uh, to do uh, the ditching. We just did Webster Road. Uh, we got Mace Hill coming up. Um, obviously, with no crew, um, we're going to be relying on um, subcontractors for a lot of the culvert work that we're still trying to get through. Um, we're still trying to talk about some paving, whether it be this fall or next spring for Quichy Road, and then our actual next big project for next year, all of which takes time and effort. Um, my focus is, has been on the reappraisal and tax sale and um, some of the larger issues here. Um, including Webster Road because Bill was gone when we had to revisit that, so that's consumed a lot of my time. Um, leaving really just the core four guys to do the work, um, and when we lose just a guy for even for vacation, it just becomes difficult to do the basics, which is simply roadside mowing, laying down some material for the grader, and just trying to grade. That's kind of all I'm talking about, uh, and to unplug some culverts. So. Um, it <laughs> would behoove us to think of an extra highway guy um, as we move forward here. And if the uh, intersection does come to fruition, it's almost an automatic anyway. Um, that being said, uh, it doesn't help when the tractor doesn't work. I think it's still down, lost the rear tire, um, but it is 30 years old. Um, luckily, we even pulled it out of the, the garage this summer, kind of adding to our woes. Um, I, I, I hate, I know we're not supposed to do this, but I happened to be driving by when the bucket loader was trying to take, pick the tire up from side of the tractor and, and, and move it, I, that tractor, the metal fatigue on that wheel was amazing. It just ripped out. Uh, and, and in a way, it's, it's dangerous. Um, so I just, um, it's 30 years old. It's on the capital budget to be replaced this year. I think Bill came back. It's one of the things on his list. Um, hopefully, to perhaps purchase this fall, so next spring we're not scrambling to have one. Yep. Um, but his list is long, so just know that you know he's trying to piece that together along with just simply the daily operations of getting the grader out there and mm -hmm. and all. But uh, the mowing's just been, you know, one Zach's new, but uh, we had. At least a two-week delay to start off just getting the thing working. Uh, did we make the um, grant deadline for Webster Road? We did. Oh, great. Good. We did. Mm -hmm. They pulled out July 31st at about 11.30 a.m. And uh, thanks for bringing that up. Um, I, second time around, I thought they did a fantastic job. Um, they really kind of dug in. They took out some wedge in places that um, you know, I guess was a little bit softer than maybe expected, but um, laid down the seven and stone. So I, I thought that um, they did, really did a good job out there. Uh, it was a little iffy. They too had some issues. The excavator had a few issues. Now the truck had an issue or two, and it was getting close. But um, 
Uh, I think we hydro seeded it actually Thursday morning, which I think was the first, but um, essentially all got done. And uh, Matt just brought, uh, Matt Dow brought the invoice today, so that'll get submitted. Um, Great. And we should be able to get reimbursed on that. So yes, it did, it did work out well. The other mainly kind of important item is the rec center stairs. Um, I think I've got between perhaps um, Jocelyn, perhaps construction, I think it is, um, or Chance Woods may have somebody. I've also touched base with Preservation Trust of Vermont that gave me four or five names. Um, that's kind of the uh, kind of thorn on our side for a bit, but um, I think all the other projects will come to fruition. Um, as far as over the activity center, we're going to do another coat of paint. We have the back door there. We have the roof of the rec center. I believe those should come to fruition, but this one is still up in the air. Um, it's getting late. We're already into August here. Um, but at the very least, I'd like to put something in motion to go for next spring and feel comfortable with somebody. But um, it's not it's really not an easy project. Um, it's kind of small, but it's not easy. And that's why nobody wants it. Uh, the person needs to be skilled enough to do it. Um, the last person just wasn't professional enough, I think, to provide what we needed. Um, you know, finding that balance is kind of struggle. What about the roof on the vault? Um, they should be coming back. Uh, I expect before October they'll get to that. It's kind of one of those that uh, they were able to slip the library in, they were kind of in and out. Um, and they will probably do the same with this roof here, uh, or do it probably towards the end of September. Just a quick comment uh, having the book sale, and we're moving the books in and out of the downstairs part of the library. Uh, the Jankowitz people were very cooperative. Oh, there that's the way they operate here with the job. Gordon, I, I have a question for Dave that um, isn't quite on topic, but um, as some of you may know, the listserv has been buzzing a little bit about um, vandalism at the library or, or just lack of respect for the facility and leaving trash and so on and so forth. Um, are, are we seeing any of the same things at the rec center at all, Dave? Do you, are you aware of? Um, or is it just the library? I will put it to, uh, I would, I, my understanding of what's going on in the library um, is kind of an overall behavioral issue with uh, killing kids that age. I think we're seeing some of that at the rec center as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're seeing, I mean, we could be, you know, whether they're carving their name into, you know, the bathroom wall or something, or, I mean, um, right. it's a little bit more structured so they're not leaving, you know, Mike's chicken wings hanging around or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that we are indeed um, challenged by um, some of the behavior that we see these days. was at the library today watering the plants and I looked at the front porch and perhaps somebody had just been there cleaning it up but it was not there was no trash around I looked at the railing because of the listserv saying somebody had carved there was one place where it looked like maybe a pin had put a couple letters at the top on the top part of the railing Next time it's painted, that will just, it was not carved, it was just scratched in the paint. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should, nobody should do that, but mm -hmm. I came away thinking the listserv made it sound much more drastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I stopped opening the, that thread after two or three reads, and then, but uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, 
Yeah, I'm glad you were able to sort of, so in your opinion, it's not as drastic as it, it was sounding. Yeah, I, I'm sure there are times when there's trash left, but there was no trash today. And there, there are two receptacles for trash. So Dave, with regard to your notes, how about the 21 or 12 house? So the one silver lining of the 2112 house is that we did get a deposit of $2,000. So that we end up getting back. Um, so that offsets the trees that we took out from Miami's legal work and leaves us with maybe $1,000 that we didn't have. But uh, the bad news is, is it's, it's completely back on the market. Never really. Uh, you know, I think they stopped showing it for a few weeks here where it was really looking like we thought it was going to sell. And then as things started to unravel a little bit, I think they came open to showing it again. But, uh, they showed it twice last week, um, but uh, the sale is did not happen. They pulled out. Uh, they signed a letter stating it was for personal reasons and not the financing. That's why we got the retainer back or the, the deposit back. Um, I've heard of various stories of kind of what was happening. I've not really got a clear picture. It sounds like it was, wasn't a well thought out plan. They were going to leave Maine, come. She had a job at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Somewhere along the line, it's, you know, the recommendations didn't come through or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it's. Anyway, they backed out. Well, my interest is we can drop the price. I think months ago we talked about dropping the price in August or September if it hadn't sold and it hadn't sold. And here so we, that we did drop it to 189 and at the moment it's at 189 It's not low enough. It's not low enough. It should be sold. There's a lot of work to be done. Who, who would be, quite a bit of work. Yeah. Who was, who was going to invest in that? But, I think that we had a potential buyer. The market worked very well there. They offered considerably lower than the 189 at 165. We ended up at 173. So I think that to a point, I think that um, we kind of let the market play a little bit uh, as we progress here. That's dropping the prime. Rate of the mortgage is yeah, but it's like it's a quarter of a point or something. Well, but it reflects that's the Fed lowering reflects on the retail price of mortgages. So, uh, you know, buyers, you've got to have a point that that's enough to motivate many buyers to. Uh, I just, uh, if I was in the market, I would think it was priced too high, and I, I want to get rid of it. It's been on the market now for a long time. So the thought process is, is that there is a, um, there's not very many housing on, on the market in Ireland and that, again, the last time I had a brief conversation on it, it felt as though the price was okay for now. Um, Does anybody else? I think we're putting our trust in the broker. That's what I would say too. That's why we hired him. I know, but it's been on the market for over a year, right? Like a year and a half? Just over a year. I mean, we put it on in like May and we had a purchase and sale agreement in essentially June or July, a little over a year. I think that the right person has to see it. That's all. What do you think? Uh, I'm not a real estate person, so I would sort of defer to the to the realtor. Uh, and especially it's telling that there's an offer, counter offer situation here, so that's that's gonna take it down anyway. So I would hate to go into another winter with it, but it's it is August. So. Possibility is real. Just gonna put it out there. It wouldn't be a possibility if we lowered the price. People looking to move to a place, put their kids in a good school. 
this is when they do it in summer, spring, summer. I mean, I, obviously I'm not a realtor, but I do have some common sense, and so do I. Okay, all right, enough well, said. I defer to the majority here, but not for long. I take that back as I'm looking at the, uh, the manager notes on the agenda. There was one other item I have left yes. off. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, farmer's Market Pizza. Oh, yeah. Every so often that percolates. It uh, percolated a few weeks ago now at this point in time. I visited it and got arrested. But uh, it's on here, and it's on here as a managerial update because I'm just kind of looking for some discussion back from the board on this as to your thoughts of what this was meant to be. Because the more I hear, the more it sounds like a community oven kind of taken care of by the town. And my impression or thought was that this is a farmer's market oven. And um, before I voice any more opinion to those involved that I've already voiced, I just want to get some feedback as to whether I'm voicing the correct opinion or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my opinion back was really stern that look, we seem to end up with just about everything. Um, you know, these ideas are out there. You know, we end up bring, taking it on. Um, my response was somewhat crisp in that you know I wanted a much more clearer idea of how this was going to work, whose responsibility was it, and I kind of made it clear that they felt as though it was their responsibility. So I, before I venture out on that plank too far, I just wanted to know where my thoughts, whether that's aligned with you guys or whether I should be taking a softer stance on that. I thought when they, I, well, yep, go ahead. I think you're on the right track. I think they should be coming here and telling us their proposal because I think we said we could put one in a long time ago, but uh, I mean, that was three or four years ago now, so. Well, they could put one in. And, oh, and, yeah. and it was they also Carol that was the, the spokesperson for it, and I don't know if he's involved anymore or not. It's a little, a little kind of clear as to who's involved. No, it wasn't Carl, it was uh, Brian's. No, no this is Rachel. Okay. I don't so, remember that. So let me come back in that they, they marked off where they, from myself and Nancy to look at it, they marked off where they wanted to put it. And it's my understanding that it's where they, he said the select board approved this a few years back. And so. If they've come to the select board, it's where they pitched prior, which is kind of, if you've been to the farmer's market, it kind of goes in a horseshoe, <laughs> the, the, the little vendor stands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as it comes around towards the, the walking track or, or the, the woods there, they've got some vendor huts set up and then it would be, and then it ends, and then this would be kind of set up almost like your next Mm -hmm. little place so it's kind of parallel with the walking path so there's maybe room for the pizza oven or whatever this is supposed to be a car you know whoever maybe be taking care of it or whatever and then there's kind of a walking track you know and then it's kind of in line with all the other vendor things um, the, the site really didn't, wasn't really neither here nor there for me but as I kind of probed as to how this was going to work, um, it becomes pretty vague in a hurry. Um, I don't know the history of what was presented two or three years ago with Carl. Um, that point, but, uh, I am familiar with the um, uh, the town of an at the bottom of Brack Hill in Norwich. Um, what I'm not familiar with is who actually has maintenance for that. I know it's a community event, and on Fridays they fire it, and there's activity. 
excuse me, once while I was there. Well, well I was, was there. run through the rec, <laughs> it was run through the rec center. Um, I'm not sure I see John doing it, um, and it was in need of repair when I left. Okay. Um, so that was Start to, to be determined. My, my but there is a there is a road map, so to speak, kind of like Norwich, um, although. Being in Heartland, I'm not sure I would advocate for that mm -hmm. because it does become a town managed. Right, and we also worry about liability if someone you know, frying a hand or you know, getting burnt or something like that. So it's just a, you know, um, but I do think it's conceptually, I like the idea. Now, I do worry about who's going to own it and maintain it. So, um, and you're coming away saying that the people at the farmer's market are going to fire it on Friday, maybe. And I get the impression it's too big a part of the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. But then I feel as though they like the Norwich component where it becomes a kind of a community oven. Mm -hmm. There's this kind of vague thing that, well, they would have trained people. So if somebody were to you know, want an event there, and then there's kind of this volunteer that'll show them how to I'm cook sorry, with it, I guess. Yeah. Um, after that, it gets, there is no real answer. So, um, you know, all I kind of heard was there's members of the community that would really like this, and that's fine. I guess their, my response to that is, okay, you know, who are the members of the community that would like to take care of it? It's going to end up being a liability, liability issue anyways for us, simply because it's going to be parked right on town land, mm -hmm. which you've got the farmer's market operating it as a non-town entity, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. So we're kind of owning that. Um, but if you rent it out, you know, it would have to be kind of like a David Hall thing where they need to purchase a, a rider for the day, but you know, right now that's you know that's an added extra to something. How big of a footprint are we talking? We're not talking a colossal, you know, shed over it and things like that. We're talking just a, a roof over it, anyways. Okay. I'm not sure if there's a cement pad involved. Well, I, I like Matt's idea that maybe we ask to see what the plans are and get a sense of... I think they're going to need a little guidance to get there. I, I, Otherwise, it could be a lengthy... I, I, I have to like board to go to the market moment. two Fridays ago, and I, <laughs> I asked about it, you know, and I, I had that same sense of... There's so many balls up in the air for some of these people that, that it's not a real, they know they need to get going on it, but they're still worried about making a living, selling their crops, and so on and so forth. I think there's some good people involved in it. Mm -hmm. I just feel as though it's important that they have some concrete answers behind yeah. the thought process. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're there yet. But I think they're going to need, before they come and spend an hour of your time, I think they need to hone that thought process. Right. Right. Who, who is the mover and shaker? Is it Brian right now? Or? He's uh, the manager. I had, so there's Brian. So Brian's kind of the farmer's market component to this, but then there's kind of the Carl and other people, community people, that are kind of a part of the component to it. So. Mm -hmm. We know of any towns that have this where it's working. You're, you're, you really only Norwich, man. That's the only place I've seen this. Yeah, and you certainly threw water on my. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah, um, I had gotten a phone call from someone a couple of years ago asking about community ovens, and I was saying I don't know anything about them. And this person uh, 
who was doing research on community ovens in New England, told me they had identified four um, between the states of New York and the six New England states, Norwich was one of them, but they were just calling random people to see if anybody knew about any more. So mm -hmm. it's a fairly uncommon phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my thoughts are we've got to keep it in your ballpark, not ours, until it's actually built and operating. And then, who knows, we might end up owning it. But there's no reason why we should go on the limb with this. Mm -hmm. Let them do it. Mm -hmm. and, they, and the town has given them $2,000 mm -hmm. to build it with. Mm -hmm. If they can't, if they can't bring it, make it happen, then I guess they won't spend that money. I think the vote was to $2,000 each year. Um, well, no. What? No. Well, they're, they're mm -hmm. going to be having that if all the way things are right now. To ask for it again. For another 2000 Yeah. Right. But it hasn't been established oh. yet. Oh, I no. thought it was. No, no. But was that 2000 I know there's a philosophical differences here, but do we support the farmer's market as a channel other than grant them the space? Is there any fiscal? Support? No, so what, if the 2000, so here's the split. Here's where I'm, this is where I diverge here a little bit. So if the $2,000 was for marketing of the farmer's market, Right. Or was to you know something to pull this together as a whole component and make it better, and kind of you know if they think the oven will work wonders for them, that's kind of it's a stretch for me. I'd rather see the marketing or, or to build themselves a better farmers market somehow. Yeah. Um, but the idea that all of a sudden it becomes a community oven and where that liability ends and. and maintenance comes from and caretaking and, and whether it be propane or wood or whatever it is it's going to make this thing go and keep it clean and you know keep kids away from it and all that good stuff all of a sudden it becomes the town so well, it's, that's not quite what I thought was you know the, the, the request um, I thought the request was to the farmer's market I could be, maybe I flipped out and didn't quite understand the whole conversation. It's kind of foreign to me anyway. So. I don't spend a lot of time with the farmers market, but I think that it would be more interesting to me if I could actually get supper there and there and down. And I think other people might think the same way. Okay. So, I mean, I understand it. What they're thinking is, it's probably maybe a good idea, but it may also be. I mean, if you compare our farmers market to the Norwich farmers market, it's like night and day. I mean, this, they've got dozens of dozens of vendors over there. I mean, probably score it more than more than that. I mean, it's a lot of people and a lot of customers, and we just have this little thing. And if, if that's what it takes to make it work, and it's not going to work here. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Norwich Farmer's Market has been around for a lot of years. A long time. Yeah. So, okay. They're hoping that the Heartland one will I just, grow. I, still don't, I mean, I don't want to discourage them. I guess is what I'm saying. I want to try from the town, thinking that's a good idea, so. But it's not, should not be your job. <laughs> if they want to have it over there and fire it up on Fridays and maintain it, and put a bubble over it and keep it clean and all that good stuff, then power to them. But when I hear the discussion, it doesn't, doesn't go that way. Doesn't quite feel all that warm. Yeah. Look at the guy, the fellow that did, has the uh, flower business in Windsor. I don't know if he's doing extreme or something. Yeah. That's the right name. He had a portable oven. And he did, he came, 
two or three event, events. I think he was at the farmers market on the that Fourth of July. And uh, oh, the um, flower F L O U R. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think he's doing it. Anymore. I don't think they're in business. No. So I mean, it didn't, I mean there was some, that was somebody who really was working hard to make it work. We have a much smaller population to draw from than, you know, uh, than Norwich. I mean, they've got Hanover right there, too, so. A lot of, a lot of people looking for kale. Eat <laughs> <laughs> more kale. <laughs> Give the whole in the message a little bit before they venture. Yeah. Okay, so um, can we do this, Mary? Can't we request a one into executive session? Do we have anything we have to discuss here? So okay, uh, What's her total time? Is it 7 or 7 30? 7 30? Yeah. We could, we could, uh, are we done? Otherwise, let's see. Do we see. want to discuss this correspondence now? Oh, yeah, we could talk about that. Um, yeah, we could talk about the uh, the letter from Sylvia Heath a little bit. That, uh, I don't know how. So it's in your packet because it came multiple packets um, addressed to me, one addressed to Gordon. Um, I just decided to give it to everybody. Um, as a communication, um, also put it in there just simply to maybe clarify. Um, I understand that she's perhaps has visited Bob or, or you or yourself before. Um, in this instance, she was under the impression that she could seek relief through the floodplain bylaw, and she really can't. Um, there's really no place in the floodplain bylaw for essentially her neighbor's house is um, deteriorating, uh, and as that deteriorates, um, you know whether it be you know brush becoming too overgrown and is kicking some rocks into the stream, um, pieces of the house fall down, or what have you. Um, floodplain bylaw is for new development. Um, it's not for a, at least a 75-year-old house, 60-year-old house that's been there prior to the bylaws, but there's nothing in the bylaws that even rectify it simply because the house is falling apart. Uh, so she, there is no relief there. Um, and the tree upstream state basically is like, leave it. So you need a permit to even cut it. So um, there's, other than the, uh, the one issue that is an issue um, that certainly should draw our attention is the uh, culvert, uh, which is, uh, does have a barricade in front of it, and that is uh, an ongoing discussion with the state of Vermont, whether that be a structures grant or um, Discuss with FEMA, um, that is one item. I did leave out the town manager update, but um, did meet with FEMA last Friday. Um, there is a possibility that that's a part of the FEMA grant or, or FEMA reimbursement because it was, um, uh, wasn't was destroyed, but it was damaged during the uh, April 15th rain. So there is a possibility that it falls under one of those two items anyways. Uh, but that's, you know, at least a year and a half process, so that's not going to happen. Is the engineering wow. done on that culvert? No. It's uh, presently getting uh, in line for an H and 8 study, hydrology study, which determines the sizing, the need for the sizing, and um, my understanding is that there's a hiccup in the state of Vermont with their RFP for those that do the H and 8 studies, so uh, they're a little bit backed up at the moment. So we can't do anything until we receive an H and H study. Actually, made a lot of good points. I don't ever. 
But they're good points from an ecological perspective, but what's what's the town's responsibility for a brook? Oh, I, I don't know. But and then that question of who owns the brook versus the water versus the... Um, Uh, I am concerned about the bridge. That's the width is greatly reduced with on the bridge right now. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's still two cars wide or just barely. Or it's one. It's a one lane bridge at the moment. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, I, mean, I wish Mary we could do something. Yeah, the, the retaining wall stones falling into the brook. I mean, that's just—it's just getting worse and worse, a worse problem. You know, it's not Does like the town have responsibility to restore that bridge? The bridge, yes. Yep. Which we're. That's what would be the theme. Yep. And we can—we can even design. We can even come up with a width until we have a hydrology study. So um, it'll be—it'll be a bit on that one. But um, that, along with the Jenny Bill culprit, is part of the discussion as well with FEMA and with the state of Vermont. So have you spoken with Mrs. Heath? What's that? Have you spoken with this? Oh, I, I did. Okay. Yeah. She has more, you know, there was more to that. The road in front of her house was paved, and when it got paved, the road got raised and creates all kinds of problems for her cellar windows and that was it was a I was there for a while. Okay. This has been going on for quite some time. Yeah, she's she's a good person. She's uh, sincere and she's had some troubles but with the, with the I mean I'm saying with the town and the road. Yeah. Um, and I think she's She's right, but I'm not sure what the town could do differently as far as where it went. Um, it, if we're looking at many, many months before the, the technical hydraulic study is done and then more planning. Is there any sort of temporary fix we can make to, to the bridge? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. If we do anything temporarily, does that affect us in their eyes, like in FEMA's eyes, the reimbursement, or, you know? I don't have an answer for that one. What? No, oh, sorry. I can't believe that. Dave, what happened to you? I think you stopped me. <laughs> you got me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it's many months for the repair, not the H and study. I mean it will not the H and study will not come tomorrow. But um, it's it'll be a year and a half repair. We have eighteen months to under the FEMA guidelines to get it done, but they were quick to tell me I can also ask for an extension. Mm -hmm. I mean, those saw horses or whatever you officially call them aren't going to stand up to a snowplow coming along. Mm -hmm. No, but I you know whenever you guys start hitting me up on this stuff, I'll come back to you the standby that we've known for years that this is an issue. You know, when it actually becomes an issue, it's very hard to deal with. So, you know, I would pitch that, you know, the Jennyville culvert that, you know, this is third washout, you know, should have been addressed years ago. So when there's actually saw horses on the culvert um, and then you got to fix it, then it's an issue. So if we had done this two years ago, when the, when the lady upstream's basement flooded, then we would have had a two-year jump on this, and then maybe, maybe not, it could have been fixed, you know, and widened prior to. But you know, this is this isn't new to anybody over in that neighborhood. Right. Right. And, and you know, my priority is the culvert 
50 yards to the right out of, out of my driveway. You know, that the road is narrow there because the culvert's falling. Yeah. So and I'm sure every one of us has a favorite culvert that I don't. <laughs> we do take donations, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I talk about an extra highway guy? <laughs> 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 That's right. and, and what was that extra surplus? We have $1,000 now? Between the donation and the house. Get some Legos and Duplos. And, uh, yeah. It's not so far fetched. Bridge over there is going to be built. A lot mm -hmm. like Legos. <laughs> the new bridge yeah. to yeah. across the interstate. Yeah. Built out of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> so. And it's going to be done quickly. Yeah. <laughs> well. Campbell Merritt? I'm glad that you've talked to her, so hopefully that's, that's good. I think we need an executive session. It's up to you guys. If we need to, we can power into my office or go upstairs or something. Yeah. That's for, for the mayor of Campbell. Okay. Okay. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, okay. Looking at that pizza and all my, yeah, yeah, I'm getting hungry. Pizza. Preferred. Preferred. Hold it. Don't, don't turn us off yet on the camera. There we go. Put a squirt bomb in the engineer and get on my over Maybe he was just thinking about it. And I think he was just thinking about it. And you know, when they put the post and the signs up, up here that you can't drive heavy trucks, that would, that was right. You posted that one. kind of a detour, yeah. which was ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry, man. I didn't quite understand the question. So, to my knowledge, there's no engineering. And when I called over the state for hydrology study, they didn't indicate that one had already been done. Oh, I thought Willis had done something, but so maybe just look. I don't know. Well, it's possible. Uh, I would be. So in, it's in, possible. Yeah, in the interest of time, let's, let's move along. You and my mayor's gone. Can I use the same words from last week? Um, oh, yes. All right, I make the motion that premature general knowledge would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. We need a second. Oh, I'll second it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And then I s also make a motion to enter executive session under the provision of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statute. I'll second it. Go in and say hi to we can stay up here. Right. Emma's in here drawn away. Oh, Seeing a sailing suit. Okay, so you have to turn the camera off. We're done. And uh, 